Raptors invade Texas, and Super Heavy Booster 3 gets chilly before it can bring the heat. The FAA warns Elon that his new launch tower may have to come down. A shortfall of Gravitas makes it to the Space Coast, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Today's video was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Perhaps it was the veteran in me, but when I was in the classroom lecturing my students on natural disasters, I always took the opportunity to also educate them about how they could prepare for them. Every year we're reminded how vulnerable and easily disrupted our local food supply can be. The winter freeze of Texas being a recent example. The more we're prepared, the more we can help ourselves, our families, and our neighbors in a time of crisis. That's why I urge you to get some longtime storage emergency food from my friends over at My Patriot Supply. They are the original Patriot Survival Company. Over the past decade, they've served millions of American families like yours. And right now, you can save 25% on a four-week kit of emergency food that will save the day, perhaps sooner than you think. This four-week kit has a wide variety of delicious foods and provides over 2,000 calories per day, the right amount for optimal survival. Go to preparewithspace.com so you can claim your four-week emergency food kit and save 25% in the process. Order a tasty starter kit for each member of your family, and they'll ship everything quickly and discreetly to your door. That's preparewithspace.com. Red alert, red alert. Starbase is quickly being overrun with raptors of the species Glorious Kaboomus. Elon snapped a photo of some of the pack leaders worshiping the Queen Raptor Vac as they prepare to sacrifice themselves and her on an upcoming Starship quest to orbit. Lots more will be migrating south to Starbase in the weeks and months to come, as SpaceX aims to berth roughly 1,000 Raptors per year. That's about what's needed over 10 years to create the fleet that will build a self-sustaining city on Mars. The Martian city will probably take roughly 20 years to build, so hopefully it's finished by 2050. To help the expediency needed for Raptor development, SpaceX is breaking ground soon on a second Raptor factory in McGregor. This site will focus on volume production of Raptor 2.0, while the Hawthorne factory will make Raptor vacuum and new experimental designs. Last we heard a couple months back, they are producing one engine every other day in California, but the goal is two to four engines per day. That's super high volume for big rocket engines, but low volume by automotive standards. I guess he would know. Elon also confirmed that the decision to have 33 engines for future first stage boosters is final. All will be the same apart from removing the ability to gimbal for the outer 20, and all will produce about half a million pounds of sea level thrust. Three engines were installed on Super Heavy Booster 3 this week, despite having a little trouble with Engine 59, and the first cryo test of any Starship booster was executed on Monday. Road closures were in place for an anticipated static fire of those three engines on Wednesday, but the timeline slipped to Thursday, and then Elon confirmed they're now targeting Monday next week. Ah, make up your melons! The thrust puck for a new Super Heavy booster arrived at Starbase this week as well. This is the structure that will connect nine sea level Raptor engines to the rocket, However, a friend of the channel sent me this picture and told me the piece left Boca Chica for Fort Worth. Wasn't sure why. Booster 4, the first that will fly, has plenty of rings lying around the construction yard. The first small portion of the booster is now prepped for stacking inside the high bay, and work continues on the starship that will ride on top of it, SN20. Stacking her parts in the mid bay and adding rings to her nose as they prepare it for the first orbital flight. The other day, the flare stack for on-site methane propellant production was lit, and a second ground system tank shell was transported to the orbital launch site on Monday and lifted onto a concrete stand where it will remain until it's placed over a GSC tank. And the final ACE segment of the orbital launch and integration tower was moved down Highway 4 to the launch site on Wednesday. But don't get too attached. It's being reported that the FAA issued a warning to SpaceX two months ago, giving them a heads up that the company may have to tear down the tower. What? Over the past year, the Federal Aviation Administration has been conducting an environmental assessment of the area and SpaceX facilities. And the tower has not been approved, despite SpaceX building it anyway. Quote, the company is building the tower at its own risk, says the FAA. The recent letter from the agency was in response to SpaceX's prior letter, where the company argued that the tower should not be a part of the review, since they only intend to use it for production, research, and development purposes, and not for launches. But the FAA has since claimed SpaceX's project description in their administrative draft, Programmatic Environment Assessment, indicates otherwise. This is far from the first time that SpaceX has given the proverbial middle finger to the FAA. Back in December, they launched their first fully stacked Starship to 10 clicks, despite the FAA's warning not to. <laughs> Better to ask forgiveness than ask permission is a great rule to live by. Pirate life! All right, let's move on. Last week, I told you SpaceX's new booster recovering drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, has left its port in Louisiana and began its voyage to Port Canaveral, the company releasing this video shortly after. This drone ship is fully autonomous, meaning instead of being tugged to its staging location at sea, 
it will take itself there, and it will be filling the void the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You left behind after making its way to the west coast. ASOG arrived at port on Thursday afternoon, and Lab Padre's new Gator Cam was there to capture it all. The cargo Dragon capsule that supported the CRS-22 mission made splashdown on Friday night last week after more than a month's stay at the space station. Greg Scott spotted its arrival at Port Canaveral on Tuesday, looking like a toasty marshmallow from heaven. The next resupply mission to the ISS will be the first to use a recycled Cargo Dragon 2 capsule. And while we're on the topic of Dragon, the next passengers to ride inside of a Crew Dragon capsule, Inspiration 4, have been getting some airtime in the Vomit Comet as they train for their September joyride to orbit. And Bob and Doug's space suits are currently on display at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. But for a short time only, so if your kids are interested in getting their fingerprints all over their display cases, best plan your vacation meow. <laughs> now it's time for today's Honorable Mention. On Sunday, Virgin Galactic's CEO was fired into space light, along with five other occupants. Richard Branson is the first owner of a rocket manufacturer to do so, beating out Blue Origin's Jeffy by at least nine days. Prior to Apogee, Branson gave a passionate speech to inspire the next generation of dreamers. To all you kids down there, I was once a child with a dream, looking up to the stars. Now, I'm an adult in a spaceship with lots of other wonderful adults looking down to our beautiful, beautiful Earth. To the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do. You sound like you're from London. The Musk man was there at the New Mexico spaceport, sh shoeless, to support his good buddy from Britain, and even purchased a $250,000 ticket so he could take a ride one day. How ironic it would be if the first trip to space light for SpaceX's CEO is on board a Virgin Galactic rocket. Whatever it takes to piss Jif off, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Jif. Okay. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for stopping by. Lots of love goes out to my eccentric members and patrons supporting the show. You can do the same using the links in the description below. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed. Godspeed.